Claude Monet's painting, Garden at Saint Adres, evidences the maturation of his artistic voice. Although Monet is best known as an Impressionist, this work is not fully an Impressionist painting. Painted in 1867, this work evidences some of the characteristics that we associate with Impressionism, such as bright unmixed colors laid down in abbreviated brush marks. Nevertheless, this painting reveals Monet's Impressionist method in an embryonic state of development. This painting at the Metropolitan Museum of Art features two couples, one standing and one seated, on a terrace that overlooks a seascape full of ships. Depicting a fleeting moment of relaxation, this painting invites the viewer to join the group on the patio as if we were for just a moment in the resort town on the Normandy coast. The enchanting motif disguises a tension in this work between its pictorial space and the means by which the image is compositionally structured. In many of his paintings of the 1860s, Monet explored the relationship between his observation of nature and the pictorial means by which his paintings visualized that subject for the viewer. In Garnet Saint Adresse, Monet pushes this issue further by heightening the visible distinction between pictorial illusion and the actual material of painting. In this work, Monet deconstructs the use of perspective as a visual method. Perspective is a means of creating an illusion of three-dimensional space and forms on a surface that is literally two-dimensional. To better understand Monet's Garden at Saint Address, it might be helpful to distinguish between two terms, picture and painting. The term picture refers to the depiction of a subject and the illusion of pictorial space. The word painting describes the literal flatness of the canvas and the material of paint on that surface. The picture is the subject depicted. The painting is the means by which the subject is depicted. We often use the word picture and painting interchangeably. However, Monet's work allows us to examine the relationship between a picture and a painting. Garnet Saint Address is compositionally structured in three bands that run horizontally across the canvas. These areas are the terrace, the sea, and the sky. Monet treats each of these areas of the picture as distinct zones within the painting. We may initially read the picture as an illusion of pictorial space that expands away from us towards a horizon line. However, these sections of the painting also read as literally stacked on top of each other. We can examine each of these areas to note how this work becomes less of a picture and more of a painting. Monet recognized two assumptions that his contemporary French viewers would have made when attempting to read this painting as a picture. First, in European art, we read paintings from left to right. Second, in the theory of perspective, we read the lower part of the painting as being pictorially closest to us. Monet's compositional structure may have been in part inspired by his interest in Japanese prints. Monet was interested in Japanese prints not only for their exotic quality, but also because their pictorial flatness suggested an alternative to European theories of perspectival space. In Garnet Sun Address, the terrace area is a picture within the painting. This area basically conforms to a system of perspective. This area is compositionally focused towards a vanishing point that we find at the couple standing at the fence. This vanishing point is indicated by diagonal shadows at the far right 
and by the invisible sight line established by the gaze of the seated man. The fence acts as a horizon line within this pictorial zone of the garden. This work's conceptual audacity and compositional elasticity may be summarized by observing that the painting has two horizon lines and two vanishing points. This is highly unusual. The first of these vanishing points is the standing couple at the fence. The second vanishing point is, or should be, at the center of the horizon line. This second vanishing point is suggested by visual cues in the garden area. Most notably, there's a diagonal line at the right that forms the edge between the patio and the grass. This diagonal line should, in theory, connect the painting's lower right corner with the vanishing point. However, when we visually follow these lines of perspective and arrive at the horizon line, where this second vanishing point should be, there is no vanishing point. These lines of perspective do not continue beyond the fence. Rather than receding towards a vanishing point, these diagonal lines are picked up by the flagpoles. The flagpoles transform these lines from diagonal indicators of pictorial space to vertical forms in the painting. These poles visually flatten the sea and the sky. The fence is a visual breaking point in the painting. The pictorial space of the terrace between the lower edge of the painting and the fence recedes from the viewer. At the fence, the picture's structure turns and rises vertically across the rest of the painting. Compared to the painting's lower area, the upper part of the painting is radically flat. We can recognize this more clearly by looking at the lower and upper parts of the painting separately. The lower section is a picture of people on a terrace. However, without the indicators of pictorial space from this lower area, the upper area of the sea and the sky collapse into flatness. In creating Garden at San Andres, Monet demonstrates a self-awareness of the three-part process of painting. The first component is the scene, the terrace, the people, the boats, as Monet perceives them. The genesis of this work begins with the process of Monet's perception of his subject. The second component in Garden at San Andres is the means by which Monet translates his perception of nature into a pictorial illusion. This is the construction of the picture that the viewer sees. The third component in Garden of San Andres are the actual properties of the material, such as the flatness of the canvas and the technique by which Monet engages his materials such as his application of paint. This is the process of painting. Garnet San Andres evidences Monet's consciousness of the three-part relationship between perception, pictorial illusion, and painting. The success of this work is that Monet has been able to unify these into a single visual experience for the viewer. Claude Monet's Garden at Saint Address demonstrates how art is not only what subject the art depicts, but also how the artist depicts their subject. This work evidences how the formal structure and visual language by which the artist depicts their subject is consequential to the work of art's meaning. The visual language that the artist develops such as their compositional structure and their use of materials, depicts the subject in a way that suggests a method of looking at the world. 